Um, today, uh, Victoria and I will be presenting to you a webinar on everything that you should know about speaking shows and demonstrations. So, um, hi, I'm Sylvie Roach. Uh, I'm a 4HBC ambassador. I represent the Fraser Valley region, and this is my 10th year in 4H. I have a dog project, and my project is in all of these pictures of upcoming. My name is Victoria Pichelli. I'm also a provincial ambassador for the Fraser Valley region. This is my ninth year in 4-H and I've done a bunch of different projects, um, especially goat and dairy um, most recently. So here's a bit of a layout of what we're gonna be looking at today. Uh, we're going to look at a bunch of different things related to speaking shows and demos, hopefully preparing you for this competition season coming up in the next week or a couple of weeks. First, we're going to look at an introduction to speaking shows and demos. If this is your first year, uh, you might be a bit confused about how everything works. So we're really going to start at the beginning, make sure um, we're all on the same page. Then we're going to look at some first steps, how you're just going to start off the process of getting ready for your presentation. Then we're going to put everything together, um, talking about posters and table display and all that fun stuff. Uh, we're going to review the scorecards just to make sure that uh, you're covering all the information that you need to be. Uh, a couple tips and tricks, and then we'll have time for questions at the end. Next slide, please. Um, so we have set up a poll for everyone, um, just because we want to get to know who is joining us tonight. So if you guys could participate in this poll, that would be awesome. Should be displayed on your screens now. We'll give you guys just a couple more seconds, a um, couple more answers trickling in, and then we'll be able to see uh, who's joining us tonight. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, it looks like we have the, well, quite a few of us joining from the Fraser Valley. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Um, could you go to the next question of the poll, if that's possible? Can you guys see those results there, all those different results um, for all the questions? Perfect. So first off, we're gonna look at introduction to speak and chosen demos. Next slide, please. Now, there are a lot of things that are similar about speaking shows and demos and a lot of things that are different. So uh, let's just go over what's the same about everything. So you're going to be presenting your presentation to 4-H club members, uh, your parents, uh, guests, judges, and timekeeper at a special communication competition. There's going to be two to three judges who are going to score you on a scorecard which we're gonna look at later. And then they're gonna be placing the top speakers. So first, second, third, sometimes fourth place, they'll give out a top placing so you know how well you did. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so what are demos specifically like? So it's going to be an eight to 10 minute presentation, and this doesn't include question time at the end when the audience and the judges will be able to have some time to ask you questions about your presentation. Um, you're going to be demonstrating a skill or how to do something. Uh, your topic can be anything, really anything. You're not given an indication of the timing as uh, we go along. So what that means is that the timekeeper isn't going to be saying to you throughout the presentation, oh, you're eight minutes in, you're nine minutes in, you're over time. Um, you're going to have to figure that out yourself. So that means you have to practice a lot ahead of time and time your presentation to make sure that you're within that time frame because you can get point deductions if you're under or over time. So you really want to make sure you're within that time frame. You're going to be working with a partner. Uh, you're not allowed a live animal. That's a specific instruction. Uh, you generally have a table and posters, which Sophie will talk about later. Uh, again, you don't have to talk about something related to 4-H or agriculture, really anything. Um, and if you're a junior and your partner's a senior, then you will both compete in the senior category. And then obviously, if you're both juniors, then you'll compete as juniors. If you're both seniors, then you'll compete as seniors. Uh, next slide, please. We're going to look at what speaking shows are like. So really similar. Uh, juniors are five to 10 minute presentation, not including question time. You're demonstrating a skill or presenting information. So you don't necessarily have to be showing how to do something. You can just present information about something, specific topic. <sighs> Same thing, you're not given an indication of the timing. Uh, you're not working with a partner. You're just by just you by yourself. Your topic must be related to food or agriculture in some way. And it has to be clear how that topic is related. You generally have a table and posters, or you can have a PowerPoint presentation instead. And seniors is uh, the exact same about everything, except that it's a 10 to 20 minute presentation instead of the five to 10 for the juniors. Next slide, please. Okay, let's just make sure we've really got these differences because we wanna make sure that we are not mixing them all up. So demo is two people, speak and show is one person. Demo is eight to 10 minutes for juniors or seniors. A speak and show is five to 10 minutes for juniors and 10, for 10, 10 to 20 for seniors. Uh, for demos, you have posters. And for speak and shows, you can have posters or you can do a PowerPoint presentation instead. You, for a demo, are demonstrating a skill. For speak and show, you're demonstrating a skill or presenting information. Demos or any topic, speak and shows have to be related to food or agriculture. And then both of them, you generally have your table, you're not given the indication of the timing, and you're presenting something to an audience. Next slide, please. Okay, let's look at the competition side, because this can be a little bit confusing if you're new to this. So both juniors and seniors compete at the club level, and you will get placed, the judges will evaluate how well you did, and the first and second place uh, demos move on and they will compete at the district level. So we're just talking about demos here for a second. And then the same thing happens at district. The first and second qualify to compete at regionals. And then for seniors, the first and second qualify to compete at the provincial level. Speaking shows work a little bit differently. Again, you will be presenting at your club, but uh, we don't really have a district. Um, often you can present at the PNE, which is one of our fairs down here in the Fraser Valley. And I know that different regions have different things related to speaking shows, but this is really how it works for uh, demos. So lots of competitions, lots of opportunities to move on and compete in different places and meet lots of new people. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're going to look at just the first couple of steps of how you prepare your presentation. Uh, next step, next slide. We're going to try and start with a short video clip to give you an idea of what demos look like. Now, if you've not seen a speak and show or a demo before, you might be thinking, I have no idea what you're talking about with these tables and posters. Like, what, what does this all mean? 
Uh, hopefully things are going to become a little bit clearer. We're just going to watch a couple minutes of this presentation, a uh, short part of this demo, just to give you an idea of what it looks like, hopefully clear up some questions. Um, this is a demo I did with my sister a few years back. And so make sure you're trying to spot those elements we just talked about. So Sophie, if you could go ahead and play that clip, that would be awesome. I can't believe it. I'm out of money again. Hey, Julia, what's wrong? Well, I was just looking in my piggy bank and there's no money in it. That's because you spent it. Well, yeah, but what's even worse is that my piggy bank just broke too. How am I supposed to save money if I have to spend money on buying something to save money in? Hey, Julia, remember those piggy banks you made out of the water bottles? This would be perfect. You're right. Well then, let's get started with our bottle bonanza. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, Madame chairpersons, leaders, parents, and fellow 4-H members. This is my partner, Victoria. She is 14 years old, and this is her sixth year in 4-H. And this is my partner, Julia. She is 16 years old, and this is also her sixth year in 4-H. I think we've lost volume. We've had no volume for about the last minute there. That's okay. Uh, we can just stop it there. We can, um, hopefully that gives you a bit of an introduction of how things work. Clearly technology is not on our side today. That's fine. Um, there's lots of these videos of demos and speaking shows on 4HBC's YouTube channel. So if you wanna watch the end of this demo, um, you totally can, you can watch loads of them on there, but we're gonna move on for now. So choosing your demo partner. One of the first things you have to do when you are starting your demo is choosing your partner. Um, and maybe this isn't something you often consider, but it's actually one of the most important parts to creating a really strong presentation. Um, you need to have a good bond with the person you're working with because this is always going to show through when you're working together. Uh, you have to be able to flow with one another, be able to read each other's body language and pick up um, where the other person left off. Uh, if something goes wrong, then you're able to adapt to the situation together. Um, it also has to be someone you can spend time practicing with, of course. Um, it has to be someone that's available and you can get to and meet together. <laughs> And often if you're working with a sibling, it works really well because there's a clear bond there, right? And you can sometimes play off that a little bit. And if you're at home all the time together, then maybe it might be easier to put together your demo. So that's just something you really have to think about. All right, uh, let's go to the next slide. Let's see if we can get this speak and show to play to uh, give you a bit of an idea of how that works as well. So really similar kind of thing. No volume again, I'm sorry. You don't happen to have it downloaded on your own computer, Julia or Victoria? I don't think so. That's okay. We can just we can just move on. Um, not sure why, because that was working perfectly fine earlier. But um, again, we can just look at this picture here for a second. It gives you a little bit of an idea of even if we just look at it. Um, you can see we've got the table. There's the PowerPoint in the background. Um, and just mostly just the setup is what we're focusing on, just looking at how things look, because um, that's an important part of just getting ready and making sure that you understand a little bit of how things are working. So 
Um, let's look at choosing a topic. So maybe it can be hard to think of what you want to do your speaking show or your demo on. I know this is something that I always really struggle with because I either have a hundred ideas of what I want to do or no ideas at all. Uh, I think I know why that the sound wasn't working. Uh, do, you, do you mind if I go back and play the video? Sure, we can try. Yeah, sure. Let's try it. I would just mute it on my end because I didn't want any noises to interrupt you. So that's okay. Fine. Let's try it. Sure, let's try it. Okay, sorry for sure. interrupting. Um, because that might give you a bit of an idea. Imagine you're walking around the supermarket. Here are a few standard items you might pick up: orange juice, tomatoes, mixed greens. Yogurt. Get to the supermarket, place them all in a plastic bag before you take them home. That all sounds pretty average to me. Now, let's analyze these items that we bought. They all have something in common. They are all surrounded by plastic packaging. Now, when you picked up these items, you probably took a look at the nutritional facts the fat, the sugar, the calories for your own health. But what you also need to look out for is the health of the planet too. When these items are empty, we throw them away, we recycle them, and that's it. Look at the amount of excess plastic that went away so quickly. Is there a way of avoiding all of this? And what are the consequences of where all this plastic goes? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, Madame Chairperson, parents, leaders, and fellow forage members. We cannot live without food, and while we are of course consumers of food, we are indirectly consumers of plastic too. The packaging around food is causing a huge problem, and I, like many others, didn't realize the amount of plastic we are consuming every day through the foods we buy. But before I talk more in depth about food and packaging, I need to make one point clear. There is nothing inherently wrong with plastic, it's simply the way that we use it that needs adjusting. If we can learn how to reduce the plastics in our day-to-day -day lives and then responsibly dispose of the plastics we can't avoid, together we can deal with the growing issues associated with them. Perfect. We got that to play. That's awesome. We are ahead of the game now. Okay. We're looking at choosing a topic. So it also has to be something that you have some kind of knowledge about, right? Especially when you are doing a demo, you need to, it needs to be something that both you and your partner uh, have knowledge about, um, hopefully the same amount of knowledge. And something that you're passionate about, right? When you are speaking about something you're really passionate about, it really comes through. Uh, you don't want your presentation to be a little bit kind of, um, you're not really into it. So if you're passionate about it, then it will really, really show through. Um, and something else, if you are a senior, um, there's kind of this idea of extending your thinking. So if you look at a lot of the senior demos, there um, are extending your thinking, as I just said, um, there are demos that have a really wider appeal. Um, they're applicable to um, everyone or a, a connect to some kind of a wider issue. Um, and a lot of the ones that do really well are related to something that you couldn't necessarily just figure out online. If you did a quick Google search, um, that's some kind of demos. Sometimes you can push your um, knowledge a bit further, make your demo a little bit more um, of a really high quality demo. If it has some kind of aspect that's special to something that only you could teach them about, or something related to that. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, but something you are passionate about and something that you know about. Okay, let's look at the next slide. Okay, this is something that I really like to do. It's called the little brainstorming session. So we're gonna do uh, two minutes. So I'm gonna give you a two minute timer and I'll let you know when it's up. I want you to scribble down as many possible ideas of a demo or a speak and show or whatever you're working on as you possibly can in these two minutes. 
And maybe even if you already have your topic, you can just scribble down ideas related to that. Just get your brain thinking, get in the mode. So as we go through these next few steps of looking at the other parts of your presentation, you'll be already in the mindset of what, how this relates to the specific topic you have chosen. Okay, and I'm gonna start that two minute timer now. Okay, that's your time off. I know the time goes really, really quickly. I'm sure I couldn't think of many ideas in two minutes. So if you got any ideas, that's awesome. Um, let me know whether you found that easy or hard um, or whether that's something that's just, you've done that before and you're super well practiced at that. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna look at putting together all the different areas of your presentation together. So. Fire away, Sophie. So like Victoria has already mentioned, um, a big part of the speak and shows and demonstrations are posters. For speak and shows, you can also do PowerPoint, but this would be in the, um, in the occasion that you were making posters. So uh, the first thing is the text must be neatly handwritten or printed. This is a really important part of your poster because um, the reason why you have posters is so that the audience members and the judges can follow, follow along with your presentation. Um, if they get distracted by something, they can look at your poster and they can read the steps and be like, oh, okay, that they're on step number two and I know um, that's where they are. Or if they are taking pictures during your presentation, they can take pictures of the steps. Um, the next, the next part, uh, important thing, is that the text must be large and in a font that is easy to read. So avoid uh, fonts that are, uh, like, you don't have to worry about how fancy the font is, the point of your poster so that everybody can read it. Um, and uh, the text must be really large. So if um, you need to test this out and, like, you're questioning whether it's big enough, um, something that I've done when I'm seeing uh, whether or not the text is big enough that I'm going to be putting on my posters is I print out one page um, with oh, just like one or two words in the font size that I'm going to be using and I just tape it on like in a hallway and then I walk back all the way to the end of the hallway and I see if I can still read it. So this if you are using this type of thing you can just ask yourself, can, would the audience be able to read it? Um, as well as sometimes the judge's table is also really far back. So they'll be looking at that aspect of your presentation that every, everything needs to be easy to read. 
Um, so when you're making your posters, avoid using uh, colors that are extremely vibrant. It's just because it's really hard to read off of um, vibrant colors. This does not mean that you can't use color for posters. It's just avoid using like neon pink or neon yellow, just really bright colors. Um, if you use bullet points, be sure, be sure to use the same ones throughout each poster. This really shows that your poster is uniform and your thoughts are organized. So when you're numbering your procedure, everything, it's not a huge paragraph, everything is separated. Um, so the next point is of what types of posters do you need? What information are you actually writing on these posters? So you should have a title, supplies or ingredients and method or procedure posters. Another poster as we, as we get further along, um, Victoria will talk about summarizing your presentation. Um, you can make summary uh, posters, but sometimes uh, if it's easier just to flip back to the method or procedure posters and summarize those steps. The point of the summary poster is just a, a shorter description of the method or the steps on those posters. Um, so make sure the printing is in a straight line across the posters. We don't want to, the judges and the, even the audience, well, it makes it hard to read if the writing's in a diagonal, diagonal line across or um, just not, it doesn't look very neat on the poster. Uh, I've already mentioned this one, but be sure to remember to, sorry, um, be sure to number the steps of your procedure. And then another poster that you will need along with all of the other ones is it gets more important past the club level because it's used to kind of identify uh, the presenters um, and where they are coming from at this comp at a, um, a competition past the club level. So it's going to it's going to sit in front of your table and it's going to have to include your name or for a demonstration, your name and your partner's name, club name, club logo and 4-H logo. There you go. So here are just some examples of posters that I have made in the past. Um, you'll notice that the writing is massive, but when it comes to actually putting these up on an, an easel that you're going to be using and um, flipping through when you're flipping through all your posters. And if you are ever an audience member and you're watching a speak and show or demonstration, you'll notice that it doesn't actually seem that big from far away. But when you're making it, it's going to seem really big. But that's good. Um, so yeah, so you'll notice a few of the things that I mentioned um, on the method poster, all of my steps are numbered here. And on the supplies poster, I'm using the same um, bullet points. I'm not changing it up. It's very, it's uniform. Okay, another really important part to your demonstration or speak and show are labels. So this really shows that even when you, um, when uh, the audience is watching your presentation, they can kind of keep track of all the, other, the things that you're using. Because sometimes if you have a really small item like a spoon, it's not it might not be very visible all the time and you might be using it, but if they're looking just at all the labels that they can kind of, they might be able to memorize or um, just know that that's what you're using rather than not being able to see it all the time. Uh, so yeah, you're gonna need to label everything. Uh, and like the posters, it needs to be neatly handwritten or printed out. Um, they must be easy to read, like the text on the posters, but you don't want to make it so big that they take up a lot of space. So um, uh, this is very, the, the size is going to be much smaller, but it should be still very legible. So you, you can get away with a much smaller font on your labels than posters. And again, don't use vibrant colors. It's just really hard to read off of. The point is that you're used that these labels and posters are making your presentation easier, easier to understand and follow along with. So if it's harder to read off of them, it, and it doesn't really help that much, which it's not serving the purpose that it should be. Um, and then something new that we have not, I have not mentioned yet is cover the brand names of all the supplies that you're using. So the reason for this is that during your presentation, you are not advertising certain products according to their brand. And 
often oftentimes uh, you'll notice that um, the brand does not really play a, a huge role in your presentation because sometimes someone will say uh, if your if your presentation is making uh, chocolate chip cookies and you use vegetable oil in your presentation from for a certain brand and then someone asks the question uh, can I use canola oil to make these cookies um, it's still it's very um, it could still work as well. So the brand is not super important and we don't need to advertise it. So the table setup. Now this is really important because it's gonna help um, really how your table, if you plan out how you wanna organize your table, you won't have things falling off of it. And it's gonna be, make your labels and everything easier to see on your table. So. Use boxes to elevate and make all your supplies visible to the audience and judges. So it really doesn't matter how many boxes you want to use and what thing, it doesn't have to be a box specifically, but that's just something that I've used in the past and I know lots of other people use um, to set up their tables, but um, you can, uh, it doesn't, like I was saying, sorry, I got lost, lost track of my sentence there, but um, you can use as many boxes as you want, as long as they're covered up by the tablecloth, or even if you make uh, a box that looks nice, and it's very nice and simple, and it's not distracting to the audience, you don't have to cover it up. Um, so the next point I have here is to pre-measure ingredients. Now this applies a lot of the time it will apply to people that are showing how to how to cook something but this can apply to a lot of other demonstrations um, this is really important when it comes to having a demonstration where you have a lot of the ingredients that you have to measure out um, this just helps so that like if you have something that's like really hard to get out of the measuring cup or something like that it's already it's already measured and you just have to worry about um, using a spatula to scrape it out of a bowl rather than struggle and spill it everywhere. Um, then the next thing is put the supplies that a specific partner will be using on their side of the table. So like I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to have a poster with the names of the demonstrators in front of it. You, also, you want to make sure that you're standing behind your name. That's very important um, so that the judges can identify um, both presenters. Um, but also so that when if when a specific demonstrator is responsible for a certain completing a certain step, that they're not reaching across the table. Um, if you do have to both use it and it works better to have it on the one side of the table, always make sure that you're asking your partner to pass it to you rather than just reaching across. Um, this, oh, um, this next one is use clear bowls so that the product is always visible. This is really important when you're pre-measuring ingredients um, and as well as that uh, it's never not, it's never not visible to the audience. So um, uh, in my, in my last speaking show, I had a, a lot of spices and I pre-measured them into clear bowls even though the audience couldn't see them, when I lifted them up, when I was showing them all the supplies that I use them, they could see it still. Um, another part you could, another thing that you could use is a slant board. Um, make sure to put it in the middle of your table. Um, and it really helps make the product visible again at all times, even if you accidentally move it. So even if you're kind of, you have to pass it to your partner a little bit, slide it more to the left or right, it's always visible. And the slant board makes it so that, let's say you couldn't put it in a clear bowl, like a glass bowl, you didn't want that to slide off the table. Um, if it's slanted, then um, if you're mixing something, the audience can always see the, the difference between the beginning from when you started mixing it and the, and the end. So there's so much to talk about on the table setup because it's really important um, in how the audience uh, can actually see all of the things that you're using. So prior to the competition, uh, when you're practicing your uh, demonstration or speak and show at home, set it up how you want it to be at competitions. Because if you suddenly change it up when you're at the competition and you put something on the wrong side of the table and you're used to it there, it it might it might mess up your presentation a little bit or just uh, might cause you to fumble um, 
in your presentation. Um, a really important, a really good thing to do is take a photo of your table without the tablecloth to show where the where each box has been placed. So when you're at the um, when you're at the competition, it's not much of a worry. You have that reference photo. Um, and like I already mentioned, pre-measure ingredients so that they're ready to go. And um, you don't have to worry about making a mess on your table. Um, and a few of these things I've already mentioned, but at the competition, place, uh, well, this first one I haven't mentioned yet, but place extra supplies under the table. So sometimes in the speak and shows or demonstrations, you have to pre-prepare an item because um, like uh, I was already mentioned earlier um, in an earlier example, is if my my presentation is about making chocolate chip cookies, I can't actually cook them there. I don't have an oven, but if I have the pre-cooked cookies under the table, I can be like, "Hey, here they are," um, and it's it's they can already see the finished product. So um, this also, if you have if you have to do that a lot for a lot of the steps, your table is not um, cluttered, um, and you're not worried with everything on the table. You just can stuff it under the table. Um, and with that, you're going to need to make sure that the tablecloth is touching the ground, um, which is very important because then you don't want the audience to see all the clutter that you have under the table. Uh, so tape the tablecloth down so it doesn't slide off. This is just if you have uh, a lot of heavy things on the table or you um, when you're setting up your table, the you're going to have to or might, might not be the presenters themselves, but um, the people that are helping move the tables, something, sometimes things slide around. So one thing, what's one thing less to worry about is your tablecloth when they're moving it in, and to put it in front of the audience. Uh, and the next thing is to use a discard bin or bowl if necessary. So if your demonstration or per speak and show requires like if you're chopping things up and you have a lot of ex excess um, product, you can throw it to the side and then everyone can still see what you're cutting up and it's not, it's a very tidy workspace. And I already mentioned this one, but refer to the, to the photo you took of your table. So I'll pass it back on to Victoria now. Okay. So now we know a lot of the different elements of demos and speaking shows. We've looked at posters and table setup and the labels. So everything's kind of coming together. Another really important element, which is really what this is all about, is this script, this dialogue, right? It's a presentation. So you need to be talking as you're, as you're doing stuff because it's a communication competition, right? This is really important part. You have to be working with your partner to create a script or at least an outline of your script. Um, obviously for demos, you're not gonna be working with your partner for your speaking show because you don't have a partner, right? So this is really important. One of the first things that you are going to be doing with your demo once you're putting all these elements together is getting this dialogue, this script, putting it together so you know what you're going to be saying as you're doing the presentation. You don't have to completely write the script or follow it as you are practicing more and more. Um, sometimes you just get into the groove of it. You kind of know what you're going to be saying, so you don't have to be memorizing it line by line. But definitely to begin with, make sure that you have written a script because um, that will make you way more confident and professional. Your dialogue should be natural. Now, this is a presentation, right? So it's got to be professional, but this isn't so much like public speaking where it's very, very um, formal. It can be more humorous. You can be um, chatting with each other in some sort of sense, right? So it can be um, more natural. Uh, you and your partner must say similar amounts. Um, as you are going through the presentation, you obviously don't want one person saying a whole bunch and the other person saying not much at all. Try and keep it upbeat and light and entertaining. These presentations can be quite long, right? Five, eight, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it may be. Uh, you wanna make sure that you've really got your audience's attention for the whole time. So you have to be really having fun with it. It can be an amusing and it can be funny. Um, and 
I really like presentations when they're when they're funny because I, it just makes me really enjoy it a whole lot more. But always, always remain professional, right? You gotta if you're using jokes, make sure that the jokes are at least a little bit, a little bit um not super, super lowbrow. You they're they're a little bit more professional. Uh, your facts should be accurate. When you're writing your script, make sure that you are double, triple, quadruple checking that all the information you're putting into your script, all the stuff that you're saying is the truth, right? You should avoid really long pauses. The short ones are fine, right? They're normal. And you can't be filling uh, 10, whatever it may be, 15, 20 minute presentation, speaking the entire time, uh, because you're not gonna be able to keep up with that. But you can rest for you know a few seconds here and there and not speak the whole time. Uh, that's perfectly fine, but definitely not minutes of no, no speaking. I'd say probably 15, 20 seconds of a pause is definitely long enough. Then you need to be start speaking something again. Okay, next slide, please. So this is with when you're laying out your script. So you must have an introduction, right? This is the very first part of your presentation. It's catchy and it grabs the audience's attention. You can either start your introduction on stage or you can enter from side stage. That's perfectly fine as well. If you have some kind of idea where you walk on stage or a partner walks on stage for a demo, that's great too. Yeah, super interactive. Your introduction should introduce the topic, right? Kind of makes sense because it's the introduction. And your introduction generally ends with you stating the presentation topic or the title. So you might have remembered from earlier when we looked at that demo, um, we turned and we said together, this is our presentation bottle bonanza. And almost all presentations are gonna end their introduction like that. So you're, you and your partner, if it's a demo, um, or you just by yourself, if it's a speak and show, you're gonna say your catchy title or your topic. So people really know what you're gonna get into for the next part, the real content of your presentation. Uh, then the welcome part, this is another really important part of your presentation. You're going to say good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges, madam chairperson, if it's a girl, master of ceremonies, if it's a boy, parents, leaders, and fellow forage members. Really important, make sure you've got that in there. Then you should introduce for, um, a demo, your partner's age and the years they've been in 4-H. Uh, state which 4-H area you're representing. So obviously speak and show, you only would do that for yourself. Demos, you're gonna be doing it for each other. And when I say 4-H area, it's gonna depend on which level of the competition you're at, right? If you're at clubs, you're gonna say, I'm going to be, we're representing the name of your club. If you're at districts, you're gonna be saying the name of your club. If you're at regionals, you're gonna be saying that you're representing your district. I'm representing the Chilliwack district, the North Fraser district, whatever it may be, right? If you're at provincials, you're gonna be saying that I'm representing this regions. So maybe a little bit confusing, but you're gonna be saying what 4-H area you're representing. So name, age, years in 4-H, your um, area you're representing. Important parts to include. Let's go to the next slide. Some other things you've got to include after you're welcome, then you've got to have the content, right? This is the bulk of your presentation, the main part of it. This is the process of you showing how to do something or presenting your knowledge, um, maybe if it's a speaking show. And this is where you can include your facts and your jokes and your personal stories and the procedure and all that stuff, right? That's the main part that you've really got to work on because it's the longest. Then the summary, really important. These are your closing comments. You have to have a summary. You have to summarize what you've talked about or what you've showed how to do. So as Sophie mentioned earlier, you can have a poster, can be a really good idea and say, maybe um, we made brownies. These were the different steps that we did to making brownies. Um, or maybe it was a presentation about some kind of something you were teaching people, uh, presenting information about, 
you would say the main information that you talked about, right? It's um, one of the, the things that I like to think about um, when writing these presentations, whether it's public speaking or demos or speaking shows, you like to say what you're gonna tell people right in the introduction. You're gonna tell them what you will tell them. Then in the main content part of your presentation, you're gonna be telling them those things in more detail, right? And then your summary, you will tell them what you told them earlier. And that's how you get people to remember things. Um, if you tell them, you introduce them to, to the idea of what you'll be talking about, right at the very beginning in your introduction, then you tell them those things with lots of details, and then you remind them of the really main information in your summary. After your summary, you do the questions part. So the floor, the floor will be opened up and people will be able to put up their hand and ask you whatever questions they want about your presentation and you have to answer them. So try your best to answer them. Try your best to be prepared ahead of time with knowing a lot about your topic so you're able to answer these questions. If you don't know the answer, try avoid saying, I don't know, because that makes you look not the best, right? It makes you look unknowledgeable and all that kind of stuff. You want to say, I don't know, but I will look into it or something related to that. Don't make up an answer. Definitely don't make up an answer, but say that you will look into it and that you're interested in whatever they're asking you about, right? Um, and then your conclusion, very final part of your presentation. We generally end our 4-H demos and speaking shows with saying, this concludes our presentation, this concludes our demo, this concludes my speaking show, called or of or about your presentation title, right? You're going to end by saying the title again of your presentation. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, we're going to try something different here. We're going to look at another uh, presentation video. So, Sophie, if you want to just introduce that. Oh, also, I should mention, Sophie, if you could just pause that one second. We're going to give you guys the turn to be the judge. Um, we want you to, to, to say and be able to practice what you've learned. So if you can open up that chat and put in your comments of, what you think, what you're noticing about this short presentation, um, whether you think this is big enough or whether something could be, a, um, the labels could be bigger or whatever, right? Obviously be kind, don't say mean things, this is Sophie's presentation, but we get to watch a little bit of Sophie's presentation here. So um, we can see and gives us a bit more of information about how this works and all the different areas. So definitely put your comments and your suggestions in the chat as we go along. Okay, let's play that clip. I'm supposed to have some of my friends over in less than half an hour. And I just realized that I forgot to buy the key ingredient to go with the tortilla chips that I bought at the grocery store today. Thank you, Chairperson, Honorable Judges, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fellow French members, and worthy competitors. Salsa. It looks like we won't be eating plain tortilla chips anymore. I looked up some salsa recipes online, and it seems like I have almost all of the necessary ingredients to make some of my own. So that was more of the introductory part of my speak and show. And as you can see, I use um, a kind of like a hooking um, type of introduction um, or part of my introduction to get the audience's attention. And then I use the salutation to uh, greet the, uh, the audience members and the judges and the chair chairperson and everyone there. So um, yeah, should we take a look at the, and see what other people, what some of you guys had to say about my presentation? Yeah, guys, please throw your comments, your suggestions into the chat. I think Sophie did a great job. This is a wonderful little clip. So uh, please try and practice what you've learned, try and think about what was really good or any suggestions that you had. Okay, well, the only messages I can see is that um, not everyone might have sound. 
So uh, someone noticed that the items are elevated. Yeah, that's a great part to it. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of like smaller items. Um, uh, actually, I wanna ask you guys, is there something that you can notice about my presentation um, about the ingredients? What did I do um, to expose them to the audience and make sure that they're visible to them? Oh, and about the tablecloth. Um, yeah, the tablecloth is not like a super, super bright color, but I also don't have super contrasting colors with the labels. Labels. Um, yeah, and someone also noticed that I don't have a clear bowl there. Um, that was something I mentioned earlier. It's because it's on a slanted surface. And if I had a um, a glass bowl in particular, which was the only item that I had at my in my house, it, I was worried about um, it sliding off. Um, and as well as here is something uh, one of the judges also mentioned is that they couldn't see something I didn't even notice is that they couldn't fully see everything in the bowl until it had a lot of stuff in the bowl, unfortunately. Um, so that's something that I improved on in my next presentation is when I made it more slanted so that they could see it better. Items are evenly spaced on the table. That's a very good one. Um, and then someone, someone also mentioned earlier that I was, I'm wearing an apron and that's really fitting to my presentation because I'm, um, I'm most likely in my house, I would be in the kitchen um, making this. So yeah, that's a really important part. And um, I'm not sure if we mentioned it earlier, but your, or actually I will be mentioning it later, um, is that you can, in your demonstrations and speaking shows is wear your, wear clothes that are related to the topic um, and fit the theme. So yeah, there's the video. Okay, so now I guess it's back on to me again. Uh, scorecards. So this is just um, a, a little picture, a screenshot that I took of some portion of the scorecard. There's a little bit of, uh, of another portion of it where the judges can leave um, more like comments and be more descriptive of what they suggest on fixing about your presentation or what they really liked about your presentation that you could really amplify even more. Um, so there, this, these um, three headers, the subject, technique, summary, those are a lot of things, those include a lot of the things that we have already mentioned in our presentation. But this scorecard is specific to what you're looking for in a speak and show. And you're going to see a little bit of a different expectations and criteria in the demonstration scorecard because it is a different type of presentation. So the overview of the speak and show score sheet. So um, it is key to have an intro that catches your audience's attention. Um, if it, it's really, it's really, really key that you have this so that um, some people they're they're watching like ten presentations. They you want your presentation to stick out, um, and it and really grab their grab their attention. <laughs> so um, again, like we've mentioned, the information that you share must be up to date and accurate. Because um, sometimes when it comes to question period, they might question, uh, they might ask the question, well, where did you find that um, information um, and say that they found something that's more recent. So it's important that every, um, the, the information that you're sharing is up to date. Uh, you must present yourself neatly. So in my speak and show and in the videos with Victoria um, speak and show and her sisters, um, demonstration as well. Um, they're not, they're wearing clothes that are not, um, they're related to their presentations and are neat and tidy. Um, they have their hair tied back so it's not on their face and they're not distracted with brushing it away as well. Um, and it's very important that you're presenting yourself. Um, you're, 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 you're presenting a, a long presentation and you want to look nice nice in front of 
your audience and judges. Um, it's very important to talk fluently. So try, uh, it is a nerve wracking thing to do. You're in front of a big audience. You're being judged on your, your abilities. Um, and like we've already talked about the posters, you're, you're being critiqued. But the most important thing is when you step up in front of the audience, you take a deep breath. Your presentation hasn't started yet until you actually start talking. So just take a deep breath and think about, you, you know your presentation very well and you're, you enjoy it talking. Hopefully you enjoy talking about the subject you're presenting on. And that's why you're doing this presentation. So try and think about the speed of which you're talking and the, the spacing in the dialogue and the script like Victoria had already mentioned. Um, you wanna make sure your work area is tidy. Again, I've already mentioned this one. Um, and lastly, it is, um, it is recommended to do lots of research on your questions so that you can answer any possible questions from the judges. Um, a great way to practice um, answering questions is get a family member, like don't ask, get a family member when you're practicing in front of them, get them to ask questions so that um, you are, you can practice how you want to um, uh, word your answers. And, and sometimes for specific topics, there might be specific questions that come up. So the demonstration scorecard. So you're gonna see this is a little bit different because it is a two person presentation. Um, so there's a little bit on, uh, again, the subject presentation, but also the workmanship between the two people. So it's very important that they are, they are working together and they have a, a passion for this subject. So more of a larger overview of the demonstration scorecard. Uh, like a speak and show, you have to grab the audience's attention. Uh, but with, what's different about a demonstration is that you could do a skit or um, something that's more interact, a little bit more interactive with each other, um, just because you also have that other person there. Um, uh, another thing is share interesting facts you learn about the top. So along with doing your research with, again, with this beacon show, this is also important, but um, you can uh, sometimes to add to the dialogue in between your partner, you can say, well, did you know that? Like, and from let the audience learn more about your the topic other than the, the things that you're doing or even jokes as well to keep them um, continue, like, continuously interested in your presentation. Uh, I've already mentioned this one several times, but dress nicely. Your clothes can follow the topic of your present of your presentation. Uh, posters and labels are all legible from a distance. This is for both types of presentations. The work must be equally distributed between both demonstrators. So this is really important, so that the, all the work is it doesn't the audience and the judges will notice if one person has much more work to do than the other person, as well as this um, really. Um, you're, it's really good workmanship if you're working together and you have really good communication of, oh, can you pass me that on the other side of the table if that's what worked best for the setup of your table. Um, and the, present the presentation must be summarized at the end. So um, Victoria just, just talked about that. So you're going to um, summarize everything that you previously mentioned in your introduction and everything, everything that you talked about um, yeah, those are really important aspects to your presentations. So here are some tips and tricks that Victoria and I thought of just from our experiences um, as demonstrators. And yeah, so one thing that uh, uh, when my club does um, presentations and gives tips to our newer members on how to do speak and shows and demonstrations, we often mention that uh, you could use thicker posters or often like glue two posters together so that they don't slip off the easel. Um, as you get as um, uh, whether it's not your, whether it's your first time you're you're here learning about a speak and show and demonstrate speak and shows and demonstrations for the first time, you will learn that it is easy for them to fall off the easel. So this is makes it easier for them. Uh, arrive early to competition so that you have ample time to set up your table. Um, this, it's a stressful, it can be a bit stressful when you get, get there because for speaking shows, you might be like, oh, I forgot something. Um, so sometimes you, 
if you're making sure that you have lot extra things as well you're you're and you're not you're not you're not rushing to set up uh, for demonstrations, make sure each partner has the same uh, level of knowledge for, on the subject. So again, this really helps with, uh, is this is like, is the work evenly distributed? Did both of the presenters um, answer the questions? Um, and they're not like, if someone asks a question, it's not getting passed on to the next demonstrator. They're both, they both have the ability to answer the questions and they're both very knowledgeable on the subject. Uh, this one I've mentioned, uh, but make sure your tablecloth goes all the way to the ground um, because you might have stuff under your table and this make, makes it hidden. Um, yeah. Um, and then when you take, take, when you take things off the table, put them in the hidden box behind the table. Um, yeah. Victoria, are there some ones that you want to talk about as well? Yeah, so when you're doing the questions, always include, um, make sure you repeat the question. You say, the question has been asked, whatever question they've just asked, because sometimes it can be hard for everyone in the audience to hear what question someone has just asked, and you don't want them to miss out on it. Um, so everyone hears the question. So make sure you include that. And also when you're doing the questions, make sure you ask are there any more questions three times before you close so if you ask are there any more questions are there any more questions are there any more questions obviously leaving some time in between them right for people to put up the hand and think of questions if you ask three times and no one puts up their hand no one has any more questions then you can finish off um, but make sure it's three times Another thing is practice your public speaking skills. As I mentioned earlier, this is really just um, slightly changed public speaking, right? You gotta still work on your eye contact and your volume and your tone and your hand gestures, really bringing in the audience, right? You can have a fantastic presentation, an amazing topic, amazing posters, but if they can't hear you, um, they're not gonna know what you're gonna talk talking about. And if they're not, if you're not drawing the audience in, they're not gonna be interested in all the great stuff you have to show off, right? So definitely practice your public speaking skills. Uh, you can find examples on the 4-H British Columbia YouTube page, lots of different examples of speaking shows and demos of recent years. I like to go there often, watch them, see all the different ones that there are, get new tips, see lots of different things that people are doing. There are so many creative ideas um, that you can get from there. Some people really, really good um, at this this public speaking kind of thing. Um, make sure you are practicing a lot. These are big presentations. They're really long, well, pretty long, right? We don't often do presentations this long in daily life. So you have to practice a lot. You can't just practice once or twice. You need to be practicing like daily to make sure you're getting really, really good at this. And you're really, really confident when you step on that stage. And ask cl club leaders or experienced senior members if you have questions. Uh, there is a lot of different areas related to this. You might have questions. Uh, definitely ask them or someone you know who's done a speaking show or demo if you didn't get everything answered tonight. Uh, so now is the time. If anybody has any questions, you could either leave them in the chat or um, if you can raise your hand, I guess, in the um, in your screen. If you don't have any questions, um, I believe Danusha has a maybe a short announcement about something she wants you to do before leaving. But um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for attending and for participating. We're both really happy that you came out tonight and hopefully everything goes well with your speaking shows and demos this year and you do your very best. Um, best of luck. Thank you. Okay, let's look at some questions. Or Danusha, if you wanted to um, do your announcement, 
now, that would be perfect. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you everyone for showing up tonight and uh, Victoria and Sophie for your excellent presentation. I love this myself because I didn't get to do 4-H. So I get to learn um, all about all the good stuff that you do. Now I'm going to put in the chat a link to our survey and it would be really helpful to us if you could um, follow that link and answer the questions. There's only a few questions on there but it helps us know um, how we're doing on our webinars or what else you might like to see. So if you can take a minute to uh, follow that link or copy it and fill it out later this evening, that would be great. Also, as you're aware, we recorded um, this webinar session. So we'll, I will be reviewing it in the next day or two. And if everything looks good, I'll also send you out a copy. So um, thank you everybody for participating and uh, showing up here tonight for Sophie and Victoria. I hope you've thought of some great questions to ask. If you haven't, um, well, you're welcome to go for the evening. We're grateful that you were here. If you do have some questions, please hang around and uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself or put them in the chat. And um, let me just finish, turn off the recording and then you can go ahead with your questions. Have a great night, everyone.